guys, it's Tori. I have my sister Alex filming today, but she refuses, refuses outright to let me show her on camera because she doesn't have any makeup on yet. That's correct. Um, <laughs> but link below to her blog. It's called The Labor of Love. If you're ever interested in reading a blog about how hilarious online dating is, please go read it. Link down, as Michael Buckley would say, in my pants. Anyway, uh, moving on, I would like to give a shout out to Hard Knock Life 11. Thanks for watching, um, and I would like to fulfill your request to talk about CDs and books. Thank you so much. So here we go. Um, so CDs. The CDs I have, I have a few different variations of the original soundtrack to show you. This was pretty much the standard one in the 90s that came out, um, the motion picture soundtrack, but it had all of the um, original tracks, like all remastered and beautifully done and like all the orchestral pieces so this was really cool but um for those of you who are fans of sci-fi I have a few more to show you um so, uh, raise your hand or hit the like button if you've ever seen Tin Man because I love Tin Man and the soundtrack was really really cool so they released that went ahead and got that CD collectors this one is going to be hard to find in a few years when the Tin Man frenzy has fallen off the face of the earth. I know there's a big fan base online right now, but that's not going to last too much longer unless they come out with that sequel that they were talking about. So snag stuff like this while you can. Um, next, of course, come on, the Wicked soundtrack. And yes, Hard Knock Life 11, and it's totally worth it to see it. Um, I know that going to see Broadway shows is very expensive and difficult to do, especially in times like these. It's a lot of money. But it doesn't matter how many bootlegs you see of this. It's not the same as seeing it live. My sister actually took me the first time to see it. Thanks, Sally. You're welcome. <laughs> Big surprise. And then the original cast recording for the 1998 Broadway production of The Wizard of Oz is another one that I have. Um, and once again, things like this are really hard to find. I came across this by accident in a circuit city in 1999. Um, I never actually saw it, but I do have the playbill and program because our next door neighbors went. Um, we were seeing Titanic that night. And um, it's really, really, really good, but Jessica Grove, who played Dorothy's voice, will start to annoy you a about 20 minutes in, so be prepared for that. And there's one last one I wanted to show you, which is the one that came out for the 60th anniversary, which is this super duper two disc soundtrack, which has literally every track that was in the film. So it came with a collector's booklet. This on eBay, I've seen a couple of times ranging anywhere from $20 to $50. Um, so you can still get this. Um, as for books, now that's something that's going to take a little bit of time because I have tons of books. I don't think I'm going to go through all of them today, but there are a few that I really, really, really hold dear. So here we go. Um, first of all, the 100th Anniversary Dedication, which was which came out in 2000 to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the book. Um, and it, it's a collection of different poems, stories, pictures, paintings from different various different artists who have uh, fond memories of their first experiences reading the book or seeing the film. And it's a really uh, unique collection. Um, I haven't actually ever seen it in stores. This was a gift from my Zia, who found it in the Vassar Library. We are fortunate and left to live right down the road basically from Vassar College. So um, that's where she finds all these really neat Oz books. Um, and for collectors, this one is a must-have. The Hundred Years of Oz, which goes through Willard Carroll's collection. Um, and He's pretty much the industry standard. If you want to compare yourself to a collector, find out what your stuff is worth, find out what period of time your stuff came from. He's got pretty much everything, including one of uh, Dorothy's costumes from the film. And um, he owns Jerry Marin's costume. That's the lollipop munchkin in the middle. Um, he owns the entire co um, costume. So he's, this is a really great reference book for um, collectors to compare and contrast. Mm -hmm. Now, most of my stuff, because I started collecting in the 90s, 
come from early 90s and after. I have very little vintage stuff, although I could show you something vintage that I didn't show you last time. And this was a gift from my in-laws, and I've never seen anything like it, but it's a home decoration pop-up. And it came from the 70s. Um, I don't know much about it except that it was used at children's birthday parties, and this is in its original packaging, never used before. So that's kind of neat, like a 3D thing for kids. Kind of cool. Um, along the lines of Wicked fans, I don't know how many of you have seen this yet, but the commemorative Wicked pop-up book is lots of fun. Woo! Hello. <laughs> don't laugh at me. This is serious. Um, Sorry. <laughs> This is a lot of fun. It's a little pricey, and these will be around for a while because Wicked's a success, and Wicked will most likely be made into a film in the next decade or so, hopefully with its original cast. Whoa, look at that, isn't it neat? So, um, these are not hard to find, but they are expensive. I got this at a Barnes & Noble. It's 30 bucks here in the U.S. Um, I would hold off. Honestly, if someone else hadn't paid for it, because someone else did pay for it, thank you very much, um, I probably would have skipped this. But it's really, really pretty. The Grimmery, I think, is cooler. You all know what the Grimmery is, if you're a Wicked fan. Uh, so, skedaddle over here, and we'll go through a couple of other books that I think are really interesting. Don't roll your eyes. She doesn't understand. She's not a collector. So... This was really, 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 really cool. And I've actually seen it a couple of other times since. But I got this when I was a kid. This is a book cutout theater. So you can hold productions of The Wizard of Oz with your kids with little, like, paper dolls and stuff. Really fun. I actually put one of these together. And it took two hours. But it was a lot of fun once it was done. So if you're looking for an interesting project to do with your kids, or if you just want to have this and keep it in the book like I'm doing, these are really, really pretty. And the characters are modeled more after the book characters in the film. Dorothy's got her short hair, and Glinda has her buns, and it's cute. Um, along the lines of books you should be reading, and not many people know about this, but this is a book called Dorothy. And it's by Vincent Bagley. Now, Mr. Bagley is a professor at Mount St. Mary College where I graduated from. And this book came out right after Wicked, which is why I don't think it was a success. But this is Dorothy's backstory. The story of how she came to be on the Kansas farm, what her parents were like, um, and her life post-Oz until her death. So, there are some books for you guys. And I think that... Uh, if you guys know how I feel about comic books. Um, anybody who's anybody should read Eric Schenauer's collection. Um, he's actually involved in the Marvelous Land of Oz and the current Marvel series. So there you go. Uh, keep sending me your comments and keep watching. I'm really having fun showing you guys all of these. And um, thanks again for following along the Yellow Brick Road with me. Talk to you soon. Bye.